Hello and welcome to day 14 of Solergy. Our topic today will be faith that perseveres. Faith that perseveres. Let's read Hebrews chapter 11, verse 27. By faith, Moses left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. If we remember the life of Moses, he left Egypt twice. First time was when he killed the Egyptian taskmaster and he was afraid of Pharaoh, so he ran for his life and went to the land of Midian. But after 40 years, he went back to Pharaoh and said, let my people go. And of course, we know what happened, the 10 plagues. Moses, by this time, was a powerful leader and prophet of the Hebrews. And so the second time he left Egypt was during the Exodus. And this is what's being referred here in Hebrews eleven twenty seven. He left Egypt not fearing Pharaoh's wrath. Even though Pharaoh's heart was filled with rage, he was seething with murderous anger against the Hebrews, and indeed he tried killing them, but of course they drowned in the Red Sea. Here we see Moses having that complete trust and confidence and faith in God. And that's why he could persevere because he saw him who is invisible. What a very, very big difference that we see from the young Moses to this older, more mature, stronger Moses, stronger leader. How do we reach that? How do we have a faith that perseveres? You see, the word faith in the Greek is also the same word used for trust. And really, to develop faith, we must develop trust in God. And to do that, we need to always come before God's presence in prayer. Many times we think that prayer is that opportunity wherein we can get from God what we want. No, prayer really is immersing yourself in God so that we can be aligned with His will and discover His power and show His goodness to a watching world who needs Him. And that is really what prayer is all about. It is being connected to who God is so that our faith, our trust in Him can be stronger and we see Him who is invisible and accomplish all that He wants for us to accomplish. That's why in three things, I'll leave us with three things. We will see three things in prayer. Who, what, and how. The first thing is, in prayer, we will see who God is. You see, Moses, whenever he would come before God in prayer, his knowledge of who God is is deepened and strengthened, all the more giving him the power and the courage to persevere in whatever it is the Lord wanted him to do. Let's read Exodus 33 in verse 11. It says, Thus the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. Remember the burning bush, the first time Moses encountered God. He asked, what is your name? Who are you, Lord? And the Lord revealed who he is. I am the God of your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I will show you my power. This is who I am. And the more Moses prayed, the more he knew who God is and the more he could persevere in his trust, in his faith, and the more he could see him who is unseen. That's the reason why, friends, if we immerse ourselves continually in the presence of God, in his word, we will see who he is and we will have a faith that perseveres, even though we are surrounded by our own pharaohs by our own Egyptian armies. We will not be afraid. We will see him who is unseen. In fact, Moses, just before he died, he made this declaration before the Israelites. Let's read Deuteronomy chapter 32. 
In verse 3, I will proclaim the name of the Lord. Oh, praise the greatness of our God. He is the rock. His works are perfect and all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong. Upright and just is he. The second thing we see in prayer is what, what God has done. You see, in prayer, we are reminded of all the wonderful, powerful, faithful things God has done for our lives. And that's why it's very important as we come before God in prayer, first, let's remember all that He has done for us. And that's the reason why we praise Him. That's the reason why we worship Him. In Moses, I am very sure that whenever he would come before God, he would be reminded of how the Lord orchestrated his own life. From him being saved as a baby, growing up in Pharaoh's household, how the Lord orchestrated everything, and of course, how God called him as prophet and leader and priest of his people. And of course, he would remember the power of God in the ten plagues, how the Lord provided for them. That's why we can see him who is unseen as we dwell in his presence in prayer. And we can persevere in faith because we know he is indeed faithful. The psalmist wrote in Psalm 71, verse 15 to 16, All day long I will tell the wonderful things you do to save your people. But you have done much more than I could possibly know. I will praise you, Lord God, for your mighty deeds and your power to save. Indeed, it's very important for us to always come to Him in prayer. And in prayer, we remember what God has done. That's why I'd like to ask us, what are the amazing things God has done in your life? Be reminded of them. That will cause you to see Him who is unseen and give you the perseverance in faith to continue on in what God wants you to do. And lastly, in prayer, the how. In prayer, we see how God works how God works. Let's look at the prayer of Jesus Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane in Mark chapter 14, verse 36. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. Yet, not what I will, but what you will. Jesus Christ shows us really the very essence of prayer the very essence of faith that perseveres. You see, Christ was asking the Father, Lord, if there is any other way for humanity to be saved, take this cup from me, Lord. Do it in another way. Because Jesus Christ dreaded that moment wherein the Father would turn his face from the Son because Jesus Christ himself became sin for us. And that's what he dreaded. He didn't dread the the death, he dreaded the, the, the time that the Father would be separated from the Son, wherein Jesus said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And indeed, Christ was saying, If there is any other way, take this cup from me, and yet not what I will, but what you will be done. You see, even though things on the outside may not look ideal, Even though things may go haywire on the outside, the persevering in prayer and the faith that perseveres understands, Lord, let your will be done, even though I don't understand it, even though externally things may seem not to be okay. I know how you work. I understand, Lord, that your purposes will still be accomplished. Indeed, when Jesus Christ died on the cross, everybody was was heartbroken. His disciples became so afraid and depressed, they, they lost all confidence and they fled. And yet that was the greatest moment that the purpose of God was being accomplished. Many times we don't understand uh, how God accomplishes things. But in prayer, we are reminded, 
if we just let His will be done, He will work wonderful things. That's why we have this quote, the result of the heartbreaking events of Gethsemane and Calvary are the empty tomb and salvation of God's children. You see, in prayer, we discover this very important truth. Our highest good is that which will bring greatest glory to Him. Peter, as he was writing to the believers who were going through persecution and they could not understand why they were going through this, what's going to happen in the future, Peter reminded them to look to Christ, the one who is unseen, the God who is invisible, and the God who has a beautiful, perfect plan of salvation for all of us. It reads in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 8, Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. Friends, even though we do not see everything, let us trust him. Let us have that faith that perseveres as we deepen our relationship with him in prayer, as we get to know who he is, as we remember what He has done, and as we realize how He works, I know indeed we will have a faith that perseveres.